Picture this. A floating city the size of four football fields, home to 5,000 sailors carrying 50 fighter jets worth billions of dollars, steaming through the Pacific Ocean at 30 knots. The fuel gauges are dropping fast. The nearest friendly port? Over 2,000 miles away. What happens next will absolutely blow your mind. Right now, as you're watching this video, somewhere in the world's oceans, two massive warships are performing a deadly dance. They're moving side by side at 17 miles per hour, separated by just 160 feet of churning seawater. Between them, thousands of gallons of highly explosive jet fuel are flowing through hoses suspended over the waves. One tiny mistake, one steering error, and billions of dollars in equipment, along with thousands of lives, could be lost in seconds. In May 1917, a young Navy officer named Chester Nimitz accomplished something that seemed impossible. He figured out how to transfer fuel between moving ships in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. That breakthrough didn't just change naval warfare, it gave America the power to project military strength anywhere on Earth, anytime, for as long as needed. Today, American aircraft carriers can stay at sea for months without ever touching port, thanks to the most dangerous and precise refueling operation ever devised. The USS Eisenhower recently completed 296 days continuously at sea. That's nearly 10 months, operating in hostile waters, all because of this incredible capability that happens in the middle of the ocean. If you're proud of what our Navy accomplishes every single day, type PROUD in the comments. The Fuel Challenge, Why Ocean Refueling Matters. An aircraft carrier might be nuclear powered, but those 50 F-A-18 Super Hornets and F-35 Lightning Jets on the flight deck? They need massive amounts of jet fuel. A single Nimitz-class carrier stores about 3 million gallons of aviation fuel, enough to fill your car roughly 75,000 times. But here's the problem. During combat operations, that fuel disappears incredibly fast. During operations in Afghanistan and Iraq, carrier air wings were launching 150 sorties per day. Each F-A-18 Super Hornet burns about 1,400 gallons per hour of flight time. An F-35C Lightning burns even more. Do the math and you'll see why keeping these floating air bases supplied with fuel in the middle of the ocean is absolutely critical to American military power. But it's not just aviation fuel. These massive ships also need diesel fuel for backup generators, cooking gas for the galleys feeding 5,000 people, and lubricating oils for countless machines. The carrier itself might run on nuclear power, but everything else requires constant resupply. Before ocean refueling was perfected, warships were limited by their fuel capacity. They could only operate as far from home as their tanks allowed. The British Navy dominated the seas for centuries, partly because they had coaling stations scattered across the globe. But American ingenuity changed everything with a revolutionary concept. Bring the gas station to the ship, not the ship to the gas station. This capability means American carriers can respond to crises anywhere in the world and stay there as long as needed. When tensions flare in the South China Sea, the Middle East, or anywhere else, American naval power can arrive and remain on station indefinitely. The UNREP revolution, mastering the impossible. The technical name for this ocean refueling operation is UNREPARIS, underway replenishment. It's a process so complex and dangerous that only a handful of navies in the world can do it effectively, and none do it better than the United States Navy. During World War II, this technology revolutionized naval warfare. Admiral Raymond Spruance's Task Forces. 38 and 58 operated independently for seven straight months from February to September 1944 during the Okinawa and Iwo Jima campaigns. They never once returned to port for supplies, yet they expended more than 15,000 tons of ammunition and consumed more fuel in three months than Japan produced in all of 1944. The strategic advantage was enormous. While enemy ships had to return to port every few weeks, American carriers could stay on station indefinitely. Admiral William Bull Halsey's 3rd Fleet steamed over 140,000 miles during the Pacific War while maintaining constant pressure on Japanese forces. Modern UNREP operations are even more impressive. 
The ships that conduct these ocean refueling missions are called fast combat support ships. The USNS Arctic, for example, can carry 177,000 barrels of fuel oil, 2,150 tons of ammunition, 500 tons of dry stores, and 250 tons of refrigerated food. During a single six-month deployment, one of these supply ships can transfer over 50 million gallons of fuel to carrier strike groups operating thousands of miles from any port. But here's what makes it truly remarkable. All of this happens while both ships are moving through ocean swells at 15 miles per hour, often in rough weather, sometimes under enemy fire. The dangerous dance, precision in motion. Imagine trying to connect a garden hose between two speeding trains, except these trains are one 000 foot long warships weighing 100,000 tons each and instead of water, you're transferring thousands of gallons of highly explosive jet fuel. Welcome to the most dangerous ballet ever performed. The process begins with both ships matching course and speed at exactly 12 to 15 knots. The margin for error is razor thin. At 12 knots, just a one degree steering mistake will push the ships 20 feet apart in one minute. With only 160 feet of ocean between two massive steel hulls, that's not much room for error. The supply ship acts as the guide vessel and fires what's called a shot line, basically a small projectile trailing a rope aimed across to the aircraft carrier. Sailors on both ships then use this line to pull over progressively heavier cables and hoses. The fuel hose itself can be up to 8 inches in diameter and weighs several tons when filled with fuel. Here's where physics becomes the enemy. The ocean creates something called hydrodynamic forces between the ships. As they move through the water side by side, the ships actually get sucked toward each other like two magnets. Skilled helmsmen must constantly fight this invisible force while maintaining perfect formation for hours at a time. Aircraft carriers always receive fuel on their starboard side. That's the right side when facing forward. This isn't by choice. It's because the massive flight deck literally hangs over the water like a giant shelf, making operations on the port side impossible. The fuel transfer system is called STREAM, the standard tensioned replenishment alongside method. Modern systems can pump 3,000 gallons per minute. To put that in perspective, it would take less than two minutes to completely fill a large home swimming pool. But this isn't pool water, it's highly explosive aviation fuel flowing between two moving ships in the open ocean. Weather warriors, when nature fights back. Mother nature doesn't care about military schedules. When 20 foot swells start rolling under two connected warships in the middle of the ocean, the operation becomes a test of seamanship that would make old time sailors proud. The ships can rise and fall 40 feet relative to each other as massive waves pass underneath. During heavy weather operations, both crews work with emergency breakaway procedures constantly in mind. If something goes wrong, if the ships drift too close together or the fuel hose starts to break under stress, they have mere seconds to disconnect before disaster strikes. The fuel coupling is designed with special shear pins that break under excessive pressure, preventing structural damage to either ship. Some of the most challenging ocean refueling operations happen during combat conditions. During the recent Red Sea operations in 2023 to 2024, the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower Carrier Strike Group conducted UNREP operations while under constant threat of Iranian-backed Houthi missile attacks. The supply ship USNS Supply earned the Navy Unit Commendation for keeping the strike group fueled and fighting for eight straight months in hostile waters. Picture the scene. While fuel is being pumped into the carrier's tanks on the starboard side, FA-18 Super Hornets are launching and recovering on the flight deck just 200 feet away. Helicopter crews simultaneously conduct vertical replenishment operations, shuttling critical supplies that can't wait for the fuel transfer to finish. Meanwhile, both ships maintain constant vigilance for submarine threats lurking beneath the waves. The crew coordination required is absolutely remarkable. On the aircraft carrier, sailors form human chains to handle supply pallets, while thousands of gallons of aviation fuel flow through hoses overhead. Every movement is choreographed, every procedure practiced until it becomes second nature. Modern technology has made these operations safer and more efficient, but they remain inherently dangerous. The enhanced stream system can automatically adjust to different sea conditions 
but it still requires the steady hands and sharp minds of American sailors to pull off successfully. The Supply Chain Miracle, Feeding the Fleet. The logistics behind keeping a carrier strike group supplied in the middle of the ocean are absolutely mind-blowing. A typical strike group includes not just the aircraft carrier, but also two to three guided missile destroyers, a cruiser, an attack submarine, and the all-important fast combat support ship. That's about 7,500 sailors and marines who need food, fuel, ammunition, and spare parts delivered regularly, all while operating thousands of miles from the nearest port. During Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan, carrier air wings set records for combat support sorties. The USS Theodore Roosevelt's air wing flew over 4,200 combat missions in six months, dropping precision-guided weapons in support of ground troops. Every single one of those missions required fuel, weapons, and maintenance supplies delivered by ships in the middle of the ocean. The numbers are staggering. A single deployment consumes enough food to feed a city of 20,000 people for a month. The ammunition requirements alone would fill dozens of railroad cars, and all of this has to be delivered to ships moving at 25 knots through international waters, often in rough seas and hostile environments. The Military Seal of Command operates the world's most capable at-sea logistics network. Their fast combat support ships can deliver fuel at rates up to 4,000 gallons per minute, transfer ammunition weighing tons per pallet, and even conduct emergency medical evacuations using helicopters. These civilian crewed vessels serve alongside Navy ships with the same dedication and professionalism as their uniformed counterparts. Here's what makes it even more impressive. These ocean refueling operations often happen simultaneously with combat missions. While fuel flows into the carrier's tanks, fighter jets are launching strikes against enemy targets hundreds of miles away. The supply ships become floating gas stations, grocery stores, and ammunition depots all rolled into one. Recent innovations include advanced fuel handling systems that can automatically compensate for ship movement in heavy seas. These technologies ensure that even the newest Ford-class carriers can be supplied efficiently in any ocean conditions. Modern Marvels, Technology at Sea. Today's ocean refueling operations represent the cutting edge of naval technology. The enhanced stream system can handle everything from massive fuel transfers to delicate electronic components, automatically adjusting to different cargo weights and sea conditions. Computer-controlled tensioning systems maintain perfect cable tension even as ships rise and fall with ocean swells. But the most exciting development is happening in the air above these ocean operations. The MQ-25 Stingray drone tanker is revolutionizing how carriers extend their reach. While the main ship conducts traditional unrep operations for bulk fuel, these unmanned aircraft can fly 500 miles from the carrier to refuel combat jets that are running low during extended missions. This matters because currently about 20 to 30 percent of carrier-based Super Hornets are tied up in buddy tanking missions, using expensive fighter jets to refuel other fighter jets. The MQ-25 will free up those aircraft for combat missions while extending the carrier's operational reach far beyond what traditional ocean refueling alone can achieve. International cooperation is expanding these capabilities even further. American and French naval forces recently conducted successful tests allowing French Rafale fighters to refuel U.S. Navy aircraft during operations in the Philippine Sea. This kind of allied interoperability makes NATO naval forces incredibly flexible during joint operations. The integration of these systems means that a carrier strike group can operate independently for months at a time. Ocean refueling provides the bulk fuel and supplies, while airborne tankers extend individual aircraft range far beyond what would otherwise be possible. Advanced weather routing systems now help supply ships find the calmest seas for refueling operations, while satellite communications allow precise coordination between vessels separated by hundreds of miles. Heroes of the High Seas, Real Operations. The men and women who conduct these ocean refueling operations deserve our deepest respect and admiration. During the recent Red Sea crisis, the USS Eisenhower Carrier Strike Group spent 296 days at sea, nearly 10 months, defending international shipping against Iranian-backed attacks. They conducted more than 100 unrep operations while under constant threat of missile and drone attacks. 
The USNS Supply, one of the fast combat support ships supporting the Eisenhower, earned special recognition for her crew's exceptional performance. Working around the clock in dangerous waters, they kept the entire strike group supplied with fuel, food, and ammunition. Their dedication allowed American naval forces to maintain continuous pressure on hostile forces while protecting vital shipping lanes. These operations showcased the incredible capability and resolve of American naval forces. While other nations struggled to keep even one carrier operational far from home, the U.S. Navy routinely maintains multiple carrier strike groups deployed worldwide, all sustained by ocean refueling operations. During Typhoon Hagibis in 2019, the USS Ronald Reagan conducted emergency unrep operations in 30-foot seas to ensure the strike group remained combat-ready while providing humanitarian assistance to storm victims in Japan. The precision and skill required to transfer fuel in those conditions demonstrates the exceptional training and dedication of our naval personnel. Every successful ocean refueling operation represents hours of dangerous, precise work by sailors who make it look routine. Their professionalism ensures that American naval power can respond to any crisis anywhere in the world and stay there as long as needed. Closing, from Chester Nimitz's first successful at-sea refueling in 1917 to today's sophisticated computer-controlled systems and drone tankers, the ability to refuel aircraft carriers in the middle of the ocean remains one of America's greatest strategic advantages. It's more than just an engineering achievement. It's a testament to American ingenuity, determination, and the unwavering dedication of our naval forces. Every day, somewhere in the world's oceans, American sailors are conducting these dangerous, precise operations that keep our nation safe and our allies protected. While enemy ships must return to port for fuel, American carriers can stay on station indefinitely, ready to respond to any threat. The next time you see news about American naval operations responding to a global crisis, remember the incredible ocean refueling network that makes it all possible. These floating gas stations ensure that American naval power can reach anywhere, anytime, and stay there as long as freedom requires. If this look inside naval operations impressed you as much as it should, make sure to like this video and subscribe for more stories about the amazing capabilities that keep America strong on the world's oceans.